The beliefs of most PCUSA churches are something like this. We don't know if God exists, but we do know that God supports LGBTQ. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about my denomination, my church denomination, the PCUSA, the Presbyterian Church USA, and why it has turned into a dumpster fire, but why I also am still staying in it for now. So the PCUSA is what's called a mainline Protestant denomination. My last episode, I went over basically the difference between mainline Protestants and evangelical Protestants. So um, for most of the Protestant church's history, there there wasn't this distinction. There was just the Protestant church. But um, gradually, especially like in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, the Protestant churches began to get a lot more theologically liberal. Now, as I explained in my last episode, theologically liberal is not the same as politically liberal, even if there is overlap. Theologically liberal means like we aren't really certain about what we believe about God or the Bible, and maybe it's not even true. All that really matters is we're like a loving community of, of justice and stuff. So, um, yeah, theological liberalism takes the um, theological claims of a religion a lot less seriously, whereas theological conservatism um, takes the theological claims a lot more seriously. So you will have um, a good number of theologically liberal mainline Protestant pastors say they don't know if Jesus is even God. They don't even know if, like, a supernatural God exists. They're just like, yeah, well, it's all a metaphor for love and justice, and, you know, maybe there's something out there, but who knows? We can't be sure. So, yeah, that's, um, that's theological liberalism, which clearly I'm not that. Clearly I do take the religious claims of Christianity and specifically of the Reformed tradition very seriously. So, if that's the case, why am I in this um, PCUSA that, for the most part, does not, um, does not, you know, believe the historic Christian uh, beliefs? So, first of all, that's not entirely true. Um, the PCUSA is a very sort of big tent denomination, so to speak. So, I will say, sadly, the majority of the churches in the PCUSA are not really Christian in any meaningful historic sense, but there still is a minority of churches that are. And um, when the evangelical movement started, the evangelical movement was a movement to leave these mainline denominations because they were getting too liberal and to start brand new conservative churches. The problem is um, they kind of just abandoned the... Um, the legit churches remaining in the mainline denominations and sort of let the mainline denominations get even more theologically liberal and even more disconnected from um, historic Christian teachings. So, yeah, that wasn't good. So that's why I think... I do think the evangelical movement was a mistake. I think if they had stayed, uh, things would really be very different. Um, obviously... Uh, some people might be like, yeah, maybe it could have been different, but this is what we have now, this is what we have to work with, so why do you still continue to stay in the PCUSA? Now, I, I specify for now, because, you know, right now I'm, I'm a single guy, I'm a col- I, I mean, not, not a single guy, I'm, I'm taken, but I'm not married is what I mean, that's what I mean by single. Um, and I, um... I do not have any, any kids as of now, so all I really have is myself to worry about. So, as of right now, um, I can afford to be sort of like an idealistic crusader, so to speak. I can afford to stay in the mainline PCUSA to try and fix it from within. Once I do have kids, I'm going to have other people I'm responsible for raising, and I am going to need to raise them in a church that um, does hold to the historic Christian faith. So when that time comes, then I'm not going to be this sort of like, you know, crusader guy. When I say crusader, I mean like, um, unlike the evangelicals who ran away and tried to start from scratch, I'm trying to stay in the PCUSA and help fix it. In my, in my church, my church was in danger of falling to theological liberalism, but me and a few other guys um, sort of protested against that, and of course it wasn't just me, it was me and a, a few other guys, but we ended up getting a new pastor who actually is 
um, unlike most pastors in the PCUSA, actually is um, theologically orthodox, does really believe the historic Christian faith. So I know it's just like a drop in an ocean, but it is possible. So, but I, I still I still didn't answer the question of, you know, why can't I just join an evangelical uh, denomination? Well, because as I said in the last episode, there are theological problems with evangelicalism. Even if I'm just as, te you could say, theologically conservative as most of them, um, there still are problems with how they approach what they believe. So, because evangelicalism was a split away from the historic church, they left behind a lot of traditions with them, which is why, like I said in my last episode, the mainline churches, despite being less conservative, are actually more traditional, and they are more, much more connected to church tradition. The evangelical churches, it's, it was kind of like uh, starting from scratch, so in any given denomination, because, you know, there are main, there's a mainline Presbyterian denomination, there are evangelical Presbyterian denominations. There's a mainline Lutheran denomination, and there are evangelical Lutheran denominations. But regardless, in each one of those, um, you're a bit more likely, and in, in Presbyterian cases, quite a bit more likely to have, like, a, a traditional building or a traditional worship service in the mainline denomination and a contemporary worship style in the evangelical denomination. That's just how it works, because... Evangelicalism was, by nature, by nature, a break from tradition. So, uh, now, regarding the PCUSA, right now they are in a state of being very liberal, but technically, their liberalism still goes against their own teachings. Again, I'm, I'm talking about theological liberalism here, although they are politically liberal, but I'm not talking about that. Um, because I, I don't want to make this a, a political video. Um, they still subscribe to their Book of Confessions, which contains all of the confessions of the Reformed tradition. Confessions are like, you know, statements of faith. So the Westminster Confession of Faith is one of the PCUSA's confessions. Um, the Heidelberg Catechism is one of the PCUSA's confessions. Now, the PCUSA is actually... I think you could argue that it's a bit more confessional than, like, the PCUSA or the, uh... No, the PCUSA is a bit more confessional than, like, the PCA or the EPC or the OPC, some other more evangelical Presbyterian bodies. Uh, the reason being because, uh, they have a lot more confessions. Like, the PCA, I know, just has the Westminster Standards, so that means the Westminster Confession and the Westminster Catechisms. PCUSA, we have a lot more. We have the, um, we include the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed as our confessions. I'm, I think that does come along with being believing Westminster anyway. But even so, we, we explicitly say that. We believe the Apostles' Creed, we believe the Nicene Creed. Um, we have the Heidelberg Catechism, we have the Second Helvetic Confession, we have the Scots Confession, and I, I, I like the Scots Confession a lot better than the Westminster Confession in terms of how it talks about the sacraments. The um, Scots Confession makes it very clear that the sacraments are explicitly clear. The sacraments are not mere symbols. They really convey um, some salvific effect. Whereas, if you read Westminster, you could interpret it that way, but you could also interpret it like, you know, it's kind of just a symbol. And a lot of PCA churches really, really do act like it's just a symbol. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, we do have these reformed confessions. We also have one of, like, the Theological Declaration of Barman, which condemns dictatorships and, you know, um, fascism and stuff. That was written in, like, in response to Hitler in the 1930s. So, yeah, we have a... I think Dietrich Bonhoeffer even, like, signed that, which is uh, cool. We have, like, a celebrity attached to one of our confessions. Uh, and I mean, not that it's just ours, because a lot of churches signed that. But um, my point is, we have a lot of different confessions, and our confessions are all completely reformed in nature. Even the uh, brief statement of faith in, like, uh, 1983, you could see it's um, a bit liberal in nature, but when I say liberal, I just mean a hesitancy to be conservative, but you could still be fully orthodox and affirm everything that says, and, and I think I would. And there is a sense in which, um, 
the mainline church's focus on, you know, helping the world and, and doing justice, even if I would disagree with how they do it, there's a sense in which that definitely is a, a biblical thing that evangelical churches often fail to do. So um, my point in saying all this is that the um, for the PCUSA, the PCUSA's liberalism is a bug. It's not a feature. Because if you look at their official stated confessions, it's fully orthodox, fully reformed. However, for the evangelical denominations, their lack of tradition is not a bug. It really is a feature. Because their entire founding is based on the fact that they split from the traditional denominations. So, yeah, um, I know this is going to sound very, very, like, Aristotelian, idealist kind of thing. I think you could say, while the accident of the evangelical church is better, the essence of the mainline church is better. So the essence is, like, um, something's nature in and of itself, and the accident is the current state that it's in. So another analogy would be, the PCUSA is, could be analogous to, like, a strong man with a disease that makes him very weak, um, and the PCA it could be analogous to, like, a less strong man but who doesn't have a disease. So he's in a state of being stronger, but his in his essence, he is he is weaker. So yeah, that's that's kind of how I see them. Yeah, and my point is that there is something about the essence of the PCUSA that I think is just fundamentally better. In my last episode, I said why I'm very you know skeptical of being labeled evangelical, being grouped in with other evangelical groups. My motivation for criticizing evangelicals is completely different than the mainstream media. The mainstream media hates evangelicals because they um, are pro-life, because they are um, for a traditional Christian sexual ethic. I'm all for that. My criticism of evangelicals is not that they're too conservative, it's that they're not traditional enough. So in, in, in some ways you could say I'm more, you know, holistically conservative than most evangelicals because evangelicalism, while they're quote-unquote conservative, they're actually very untraditional in in many different ways. Yeah, so that's why um, there are certain things that I think are just better about um, the mainline the mainline Protestant Church. And I think, like I said, the mainline Church's problems are are bugs, whereas the evangelical Church's problems are features. So I know this is a pretty crazy proposition, but just think for a moment. Imagine if every single conservative evangelical Protestant abandoned their evangelical churches. I know this is not realistic, this is just hypotheticals, because, you know, I'm an idealist. They, If they abandoned their evangelical churches, joined mainline churches, stayed there for like a generation, and gradually um, kicked out all the people who are theologically liberal in leadership, and just sort of reclaimed the mainline church for Jesus, I really think that would be a big achievement for God's kingdom. Because the mainline church really is the historic church. They have all the historic buildings, they have all the seminaries, they have all the resources, and the evangelicals were kind of the ones that were forced out and forced to start from scratch, but they never did as good a job. Um, another analogy is, uh, like, there was this beautiful, you know, city... Um, that belonged to a, a beautiful city, belonged to a king, and um, no one could penetrate it from the outside because its walls and fortresses were just too strong. But some people were able to hijack it from the inside, and when they did, the people loyal to the king just fled to the countryside and tried to build a brand new city, but it was never as good. And then they uh, just kept losing ground. So their only option is to go and try to reclaim the original city. So I guess I would call this... Operation Reconquista, where I really think Christians who do consider themselves, you know, theologically conservative, Bible-believing, if there is a mainline church that's sort of on the fence, like not totally theologically liberal, just sort of on the fence between orthodox and not, I think, um, you know, Bible-believing Christians should get involved in those and try and, try and you know, push, push it in a good direction, because, because the essence of mainline churches are better, I think we need to make the accidents of mainline churches better too. And I'm I'm speaking in like philosophical language when I say essence and accident. So the 
the essence is better, the condition is worse, but condition is a lot more changeable than essence. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, I think my church is starting to look pretty good. Um, I, I gotta say, my church is looking a lot more like a mainline church. Okay, once I... Because, you know, mainline churches generally look better. They're the historic churches. I am gonna add a bunch of stained glass once I get some. So, the, uh, this is... The front is coming along pretty well. I have a cross. I have, like, a nice entrance. I have an alpha and omega symbols. It's gonna look better when I get rid of the dirt there. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you later. Bye!